These are the solar panels used to charge our electronic vehicle. These are large panels, each providing 320 watts. Each pair is in series for 64 volts. The mount is built with treated 4x4s with plastic on the ground and hardy boards to prevent weed growth under the solar panels. Screw-in ground anchors are used to secure the mount to the ground. A DC power switch is used to disconnect the solar panels. Inline fuses are used to protect in case one of the panels shorts. These solar panels can provide about 50 additional miles on a sunny summer day and about 30 additional miles on a sunny winter day. The solar panels connect inside the shop to the inverter charger. Ferrite clamp-ons and toroids are used to reduce RFI noise. Four LI time mini batteries are used for backup. A circuit breaker box is used for AC power. The inverter charger has a grid input if you want to charge the batteries from the grid. I used three ground rods to ground the case for the inverter charger. This wiring diagram shows how the solar panels are wired in parallel and in series. Fuses are added in case one of the solar panels shorts. A DC circuit breaker allows the solar panels to be turned off if needed. Ferrite is used to reduce radio interference. A DC circuit breaker allows the batteries to be disconnected. The batteries are connected in series for 48 volt operation. And finally, standard house circuit breakers are used to connect the power to the outlets. These are the solar panels I used. The critical thing is to make sure the voltages for the solar panels match the inverter requirements. Use the website shown here to predict your solar panel output. This is the inverter charger I used, which had FCC Part 15B certification, which turned out to be not at all true. This is the radio interference when charging a car. I was able to reduce it some, but nowhere what would be needed to use the amateur radio equipment. I used four lithium phosphate batteries. It's important that you don't charge these batteries below freezing. This was my first design for the solar panel mount. 
I decided not to go with this design because we have many rocks making it difficult to dig holes into the ground. This is the design I went with using twist-in ground anchors to secure the mounts. I used a 115 volt outlet to support a level 1 charger. An upgraded design would use a 240 volt outlet for a type 2 charger. I had to connect ground to neutral otherwise the charger cable would indicate a fault. In summary, this size of solar panel can charge your car 30 to 50 miles on sunny days. You would still need grid power for cloudy days and long trips. The major problem was the interference to radio communications.